Hey folks, Lionel here. Hey, this video is all about diving deep into some HubSpot tips. And this video is specifically touching on integrating HubSpot with ZoomInfo. We hear lots of people that are using uh, HubSpot, many are using ZoomInfo, but putting the two of them together really is an outstanding partnership. So I'm gonna actually show some examples of how you're able to use ZoomInfo and HubSpot together. I'm actually going to show an example here of a prospecting workflow. So let's say you're working in the transportation industry and you're looking for uh, you know, shippers to be able to sell to, or maybe you're in a construction industry, again, looking for you know, subcontract just to be able to build relationships with and sell your products. You know, here's a great example of, of how this would all come together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dive into this uh, map and then we'll go back and forth between Zoom Info and HubSpot and just tie everything together. What you'll see here is our first stage is prospecting in Zoom Info. So I'll show you really briefly you know, how that, that can be done. Basically, when you're signed into Zoom Info, you're in your dashboard here and you're going to see a bunch of names in, in the middle. But basically what you're doing on the left hand side is you're adding in your different filters. So, for example, you know, some of the filters that I've done in advance of this video here is that I'm looking for operations people. I'm looking for people at uh, the C-suite level and the VP level. And, uh, you know, we can also have, say, recruitment in there. Say if you're working in truck driver re recruitment, you're trying to target those types of people. Uh, if you don't want that, though, again, it's very easy to be able to deselect that. And you'll notice all of the contacts are refreshing. And then uh, it also added transportation as an industry filter as well. So basically, by putting all of those different filters on the left hand side, it spits out a list of contacts you're able to look at. You can look at each individual person and actually get a real Real quick uh, view, uh, you know, by clicking quick view here, of course, and it will give you more information on this person. And it's actually pulling again, real time data from all these various sources about people and, and companies, which is pretty cool. So basically the, the first step of this uh, workflow and, and integration between HubSpot and Zoom Info is your sales uh, rep, business development manager, whatever their title may be, key account rep, they are working in HubSpot looking at a specific uh, niche, wherever your, your prospects uh, may be, right? So they're basically doing that. And rather than exporting a list and then importing lists into HubSpot, one of the really nice things is you can actually just do a sync uh, directly with HubSpot and it'll put those contacts right into HubSpot. And it'll also tag those people as coming from Zoom Info. So you'll never ever lose that information. So we'll just keep moving on here. So that's again, for first step. And then we get into the HubSpot sync, as I mentioned. And then what we have in the background is lead scoring. So I'm actually going to have a separate video and uh, we'll attach a link for that. And that is specific to lead scoring and uh, basically uh, some ways to be able to do that within the HubSpot environment. For now though, let's just say we have those contacts and they're going to go through our lead scoring uh, matrix. So that could be based on their region that they are in North America, their company size, revenue size, number of people, their industry sector, their NACE code, whatever it may be, you know, we're able to have our lead scoring uh, matrix that we're evaluating prospects. Based on that lead scoring, now what we actually do is we have prospects moving into these lists, right? And basically we have lists um, broken down, and this is just one of the many ways to be able to do it, but we have cold lists, warm lists, and hot lists. So keep in mind at this point, we haven't done any uh, outreach with people. So basically what is happening is we have these contacts, they're running through our matrix, getting points assigned. And then when they hit a certain level, we're going to take some sort of actions. Now, what I will say was specific to lead scoring and, and how they get on the hot and cold and, and warm list is it's based on their demographics, like the criteria of the contact and the company, but it's also based on their engagement. So how many times have they they come to your website or they downloaded things and they hit the book a meeting button all those types of things will add or reduce points uh, with their lead score anyway once someone uh, let's say for example hits the hot list they will automatically be added to an active list in hubspot and active means that anytime something happens that list is updating again in real time. So what you could then do is actually have a workflow in place that notifies your BDM or inside salesperson, again, whatever role they may be in, 
that someone has now met the criteria of being on the hot list. So now what happens is that person is notified. So keep in mind up to this point that they haven't done any outreach. So now what that sales uh, professional can do is they can actually enroll their prospect in an email marketing sequence, right? So uh, I won't get into this for this video today, but in HubSpot, you have the marketing emails and sales emails. The sales emails are called sequences. Marketing emails are broadcast through uh, workflow. So very similar, but, but different at the same time. So this would be a new sequence. So we're going to be sending an introductory email and then several follow-up emails. And at any time, if that prospect responds or they click a book a meeting link in my email and book a meeting with me, that removes them from that introductory sequence and they would no longer get the rest of those uh, videos. Anyway, so we enroll someone in this uh, EMS then we would also reach out through LinkedIn, you know, send a connection request, you know, do some research on them. And then, you know, we would make some phone calls. Now, this would be a, a great time where if you're using a, a tool like Kixi, for example, where you're able to do outreach through SMS uh, marketing. You know, my actually, I have a, an insurance agent that does this all the time, and he'll send me a text message saying, hey, Lana, I'm going to be calling about five minutes. Is that okay? You know, so it really is a good use of his time and make sure that I'm prepared for his call. That may or may not fit your, your organization and how your sales process works. But again, if it does, you know, that that's where you would uh, layer on that element as well. You, again, using a tool like Kixi. Uh, however, if you're just uh, making phone calls, you would call your prospect. And for those of you that are familiar with HubSpot already, you can make phone calls right from HubSpot. It records it. You can also tie in things like, you know, Firefly. So it's an AI note taking tool. All the transcripts, everything is, is right in HubSpot and it logs that, that meeting and that call, which is, is pretty sweet. So now it's up to your business development manager, inside sales rep to be building a relationship with a prospect, making sure that they are problem aware, you know, going through a discovery call and then uh, moving the, that uh, contact towards getting an estimate quote proposal, whatever may fit your your business and then basically they're they're now deep in the the sales cycle and managing their pipeline and that's again where the you know i just have one box here of, of following up here so now that someone is actually in their their pipeline and they have a hot lead identified and they're they're actively trying to move them forward that's where the the deals pipeline actually come in with hubspot and this, these are just in our demo account just some examples here but we have, uh, you know, the MQL to, to contact stage. And then uh, once they're qualified, they'd move to an SQL and then, you know, a proposal or estimate and the negotiation stage all the way through to sending a contract and then either closing, uh, having the business close one or close lost again, depending on how that re relationship uh, uh, turns out with that company. So I'm not going to dive super deep in, in here. But as you can see, again, looking at this uh, graphic, we have everything right from prospecting in a Zoom info, uh, getting the right people, you know, building the lead scoring around who they are, who we're going after, building relationship, getting into the sales cycle and closing deals. Again, all seamlessly can be done all within a Zoom info and a HubSpot. So it really is a, a sweet combination there. So just to wrap things up, uh, again, that's just a very brief uh, overview, but if you have used HubSpot and you've used Zoom info already, you know, I'd love for you to be able to share your experience in the comments below. If you're considering either of these two tools and you have questions, please comment with those as well. So thanks so much for watching this. I hope you gained a lot of value and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.